I'm Charles Bankhead of MedPage Today, reporting from the American Urological Association meeting in Washington. Treatment with a bone-targeted therapy significantly improved bone metastasis-free survival in men with castration-resistant prostate cancer. The findings add to those from an earlier study that showed denosumab was more effective than zoledronic acid for prevention of skeletal-related events in men with advanced prostate cancer treated with androgen deprivation therapy. An investigator in both trials, Dr. Neil Shore of the Carolina Urologic Research Center in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, discussed some of the key issues that physicians and patients should be aware of before they use the drug. Dr. Shore, denosumab is a new agent. Uh, urologists are familiar with using bisphosphonates. How, uh, what do they need to know about d denosumab and what do they need to tell their patients? I think for urologists the most important thing to understand about the breakthrough in the approval of denosumab, now known as Exgeva, is that there, it, this is different. First of all, there was a head-to-head -head trial that was performed between zoledronic acid and Exgeva. And the endpoints were first for non-inferiority, and was it as good? And the answer was yes, resoundingly. And then the secondary endpoint was superiority in a head-to-head -head trial. And it was found to be superior. In other words, it prolonged the incidence and the development of skeletal-related events versus the current standard of care. So it's quite a breakthrough. Now, in addition to the efficacy data, it's easier to administer. It's not an infusion therapy. It's not given intravenously. It's given subcutaneously. It's a 1.7 milliliter volume of subcutaneous injection with a 27 gauge needle. So why do I spend time on that? It's because it's very easy to give in the office. Very simple, very user friendly to the clinic. Every urology office has a nurse or nurse practitioner uh, or medical assistant who can give a subcutaneous administration of drug. So not only is it very easy to give, but it's remarkably well tolerated. There are no uh, phase reactions. Phase reactions we see in about 20% of patients who receive zoledronic acid. Not a horrific complication, but it's a fever, myalgia, and chills. You don't see that with the uh, denosumab. So uh, the other thing that's very important in addition to the ease of administration as well as the superior efficacy is the fact that it's not cleared by the kidneys. There's no renal metabolism required for Exgeva. What does that mean? It means you don't have to check a creatinine level. You don't have to dose adjust, which you do have to check a creatinine level and potentially dose adjust for every administration of intravenous solitronic acid. So I think that's what's really significant for urologists compared to previous uh, um, therapy that was only available with zoledronic acid. Who would you consider a, a good candidate for treatment with denosumab and when would you initiate the treatment? Yeah. So I can tell you from my personal experience, uh, all patients who present with bone metastasis with prostate cancer and even some of my patients who present with bone metastasis with uh, renal or bladder or subsequently develop bone metastasis are candidates for Exgeva. So for the urologist, it's for any patient who presents with bone metastasis, whether they're androgen sensitive or castrate resistant. And um, what are the uh, adverse events? You mentioned there some differences previously. Are there any uh, adverse events that might be seen with denosumab that, that aren't seen with bisphosphonates? But I think a particularly unique side uh, safety effect or side effect uh, toxicity that one needs to be aware of in any anti-resorptive therapy, whether it's an intravenous or oral bisphosphonate or subcutaneous exgeva, is the potential to develop what's called osteonecrosis of the jaw or ONJ. Now, what we found in our trial of over 900 patients in each arm of the trial, so a rather robust number of patients, and with looking at other solid tumor trials worldwide of over 5,600 patients, that the incidence is approximately between one and two percent. Uh, it's important to try and prevent this incidence of osteonecrosis of the jaw. What is ONJ? Uh, oftentimes it's just a erosion or ulceration of the mucosa in the mandible. Uh, and 
It can be prevented by just practicing good oral hygiene, making sure the patient has any dental manipulation performed prior to administration of the therapy. That's very important. Uh, once it's identified, it's uh, overwhelmingly treated in a conservative fashion. What do I mean by conservative? Antibiotics, oral rinses. And oftentimes that will result in spontaneous improvement of the lesion. It's a very, very small percentage, single digits, that would ever require any sort of true significant surgical intervention. From the American Urological Association meeting in Washington, I'm Charles Bankhead, MedPage Today.